Welcome to Sorry If I Spit When I Speak. The Bengals have made it clear they want to bring back Russell Bodine, and fans have been wondering why. Bodine has been the weakest link on the offensive line for most of his career, and his inability to get a push up front has resulted in lackluster running games the past two years. So, John, tell me, what is the front office thinking exactly? The last two off seasons, after his second and third season respectively, the Bengals and Paul Alexander, the offensive line coach at the time, fended off all criticism towards Bodine. He was the one player that everyone on the outside knew was bad and knew that the Bengals needed to get rid of. But, you know, they traded up for him. They made him the undisputed starter for three years. Now he started all 64 games in his four years, and not once did they bring in competition. You know, they made their bed, and for all we know, they're going to continue to sleep in it because to them, it would be a hard loss to take because they desperately want to be right. He's gotten ever so marginally better year after year because they gave him every opportunity to get there in the form of 64 starts. And best of all for them, he'll cost way less than the market price for centers, and he's got the veteran status that a rookie you know, wouldn't have. In short, he's cheap, he's durable, and he's experienced. And that's why he's a favorite to get resigned, because he fits the mold of who they like to retain. Look, so I have a theory. It's a little far-fetched, but hear me out, okay? I think that you know how they're parallel universes. I believe that Marvin Lewis and the, and, and the Bengals management are living in an alternative universe. They seem to be among us, but the reality that they perceive is actually kind of different. Last season, take last season as an example. In their minds, great season. Andy Dalton, think him as a quarterback. In their minds, he's an elite QB. Let's build a team around him. Marvin Lewis as a head coach. He's the second best head coach in the NFL. Let's give him a raise and another two years. That's what I mean. It's like something's off. Twilight Zone. Okay. Yeah, I know. I, I hear you, uh, Hoji. But, uh, John, I want to ask you, what what kind of raise are we talking about? Yeah, we're definitely talking about less than what the guys like Brandon Linder or Alex Mack or Marquise Pouncey are getting on the open market. We're talking about less than way less than $5 million a year, and specifically in terms of guaranteed money a year, we're talking, you know, barely above what the top rookie centers are getting nowadays, and, you know, are selected in the first couple rounds. He'll be paid like a very expensive rookie if he were to get a second contract as a starter. All right, so look, you said they, they want a guy who's a veteran, but he gets to be paid like a rookie. I get that. And, you know, he also, he can bench press really fast or something. He got a lot of reps and, you know, he, he does all that. Uh, look, he's still very young. He's only 25 and he's got the experience. He has some chemistry with Giovanni Bernard, you know, they play together. There's all these things to consider. And also, uh, you know, we have Frank Pollock coming here and he kind of, you know, endorsed Bodine. And he was able to make the most out of uh, the talent he had on the Cowboys. So, John, do you think, you know, those reasons, do you think that they see something in Bodine, that they see that they can develop him under Pollock? Uh, I don't think so. I think um, the amount of potential that Bodine has left is basically all but evaporated because of the player that he was when he first came into the league. He didn't have a lot of athletic upside in terms of short air quickness or just overall relative speed. He has a lot of upper body strength, but none of that strength is located into his core, and that's why you see him struggle a lot of times in pass protection. That's why you see him, he can't out-leverage you know, defensive tackles in the running game. His overall upside at this point, even for being only 25 years old, is relatively low. And the types of good games that you see from him now are really the best that he's ever going to get. So if it, is that worth a second contract? I don't think so. But in the Bengals' minds, it might be. Well, he did show some signs of life. You know, like you said, he's had good games, but his good games... Maybe some of his best games came at towards the end of last season. You know, I'm talking about Week 14 against the Bears. He was the third highest graded center in the entire NFL, according to Pro Football Focus. Now, he was right behind number two, Super Bowl champion and motivational speaker, Jason Kelsey. Now, I'm not saying that that means that the Bengals are going to win the Super Bowl with Bodine and Bodine's going to give a great speech and all that. But I'm also not not saying that. You know what I mean? And then also Bodine, just a couple of weeks earlier, he had a, a very good performance against the Browns. So, uh, John, what happened in, let's take that game against the Bears. What was he doing right? And, you know, and why can we think that maybe he do, does more of that? Right, so in that Bears game, he was facing one of his toughest matchups in the entire season in the form of one of the best interior pass rushers in Akeem Hicks. And for the most part, Bodine really shut him down in terms of one-on-one -on -one pass protection. I mean, we can look at this first play, right? It's just a simple, you know, 
it's just a slide protection towards the left and Bodine just keeps Hicks in front of him and he actually gets Hicks off his feet multiple times in this game. Here's another example. Yeah, it's just it, it, Hicks is lined up in that nose tackle position and, you know, Bodine gets Hicks off the ground and just his hands are shooting out. You know, he's not gaining, he's not giving up any ground. He's showing decent functional strength. Here, here we go again, you know, Hicks in that nose tackle position, Bodine matching up with him off the snap. You know, the hands fighting and Hicks is not getting any penetration. Hicks finished his game with only one tackle and basically no interior pressure given up. But again, this is the outlier in terms of Bodine's performances. You're not going to see him do this week in and week out. So if you're if you're expecting, you know, this type of game, 16 games a year, you're going to be wrong. But at this point, Bodine has marginally gotten better over the course of his career where he can, you know, produce outcomes like this but just on a very inconsistent basis and correct me if i'm wrong but i feel like the center is where the running game starts you know the, that push that he gets if he doesn't get a the push then you get the right guard or the left guard trying to help out which when we had zeitler and you know bowling together a lot of times they were you know shifting their assignments to help out bodan and the running game was suffering and last game was even worse without zeitler so Without a, a, a center that can get push up front, the, you know, that, that's a big problem. And you don't think Bodine will ever develop into that. He is not the kind of center that the Bengals need to operate a running game that they want to. And that's with a lot of outside zone. That's just a lot of zone concepts in general. He's not the athlete to get in front of, you know, of, of three techniques and defensive tackles that are shaded on the play side of the run. He's not in... He's not that type of athlete to out-leverage guys and just get in front of those guys. And that's why a lot of times we saw Zeidler having to help out on tougher blocks or, you know, Bowline having to reach over to that three-tech or whatnot. And it's just it's just that limitations as an athlete where he's not going to be a successful run blocker in this type of, you know, very stretched out running game. And that's a lot of that's a lot of the issues that the Bengals had as a running offense. A lot of it started up front with Bodine and his limitations in that part. Yeah, I mean, we did, look, we did have a dominant, like I said, Week 12 game against the Browns. Uh, you know, look, uh, Joe Mixon had uh, five yards of carry, you know, 114 yards. But you think, like you're saying, you think that was just, what, because the Browns are, you know, they had a bad game or they're the Browns. Both, really. They're just the Browns. I actually totally agree with John on this one. One game really doesn't mean much. And I'll give you an example of that. So, uh, Daddy and I used to make albums together, and one of our hit singles was uh, "Daddy O Train." And you know, we made this song, and it was a country song. And uh, and and I wasn't really all that involved in it. But then we thought, oh, or Daddy O really thought, let's make a whole country album. Daddy was not a country singer. We made a crappy c- a country album, tore the band apart, end of our career. One song doesn't mean you can make a whole country album just like one game doesn't mean that you know you can win more games all right well uh that is our free agency evaluation of bodine now if the bengals uh, listen to this podcast they're probably not going to resign him uh, but they don't unfortunately and that's probably the biggest issue the bengals have so to help improve your bengals i suggest you share this podcast and get people to subscribe and you know help the puppet fund anything you can do so that we can send the message of correct evaluations to the bengals thank you and we'll see you next time